Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, good morning everybody. I am Professor Dr. Muhammad Ayman from Alexandria University, Ecolab. This is a joint workshop with Prince Sultan Cardiac Center in Ihsab from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I have the honor to work uh, with my dear colleague, consultant Dr. Hani Mahmoud. He is eminent echocardiographer in 3D Echo. I am very pleased to have him with us in Cardio Alex. He's going to give us a talk on 3D TEE examination, a step by step approach. Dr. Hen. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everybody. It's my pleasure and honor to be here and share uh, some sessions in Cardio Alex, which is one of the mega events in the region. Uh, upon the invitation, uh, the kind invitation of Dr. Uh, Muhammad Ayman and the Ecolab of uh, Alexandria University, we are going to uh, present step-by-step -step approach on how to do uh, three-dimensional transesophageal echocardiography exam. I hope everybody will enjoy it. I hope it will be beneficial for everybody who's interested in 3D. Thank you. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, this is the first case of uh, as like in a box in Cardio Alex. Hopefully it will be uh, beneficial for all. Uh, today this is a, a case of mitral valve prolapse uh, for the assessment of the feasibility of mitral valve repair. Apart from the diagnosis, we'll just explain how to do the 3D TEE exam step by step, including uh, all the acquisition modes at the beginning, and then we'll go through uh, each cardiac structure like valves or the septum or left atrial appendage, how to assess it by 3D TEE. First step is the acquisition modes and image control. As we can see here from the keyboard, we have the 2D and then live 3D, X-plane, full volume and 3D zoom. X-plane, although it is not a 3D mode, but you will not be able to get an X-plane mode except by 3D TEE Pro. X-plane. Explain will give you a simultaneous biplane image. This is my this is my reference image that I started with, and this is the orthogonal view. I got it by putting the explain line here, as you can see. By moving the explain, the sector on the right hand is changing. So here, if I'm putting my line on the LV, it gives me LV here in two chamber view. And if I'm putting in the aortic valve, as you can see, it gives me the aortic valve in another axis here. This is the X plane. Live 3D. Live 3D will give me a narrow sector, but live. From its name, we can know it's live. So that is what's happening right now. I can monitor live events like septal puncture or catheter motion with that mode and uh, it is narrow sector. What do you mean by narrow sector? Narrow sector means if I move the picture like that, it will appear that the elevation width is small. This is called the elevation width. The image controls here are, as we can see, there is 3D rotate down on the screen and rotate Z, I can sweep between them by clicking these buttons. Lateral position, elevation position, 3D rotate and rotate Z. If I want to rotate Z, I can, by moving the ball, I will rotate clockwise and anti-clockwise, as you can see. If I move to 3D rotate, so that will be rotation from side to side or up and down. Elevation position means I will change the, my position of the imaging sector from back to front. If I move the rolling ball, as you can see, the image sector is changing, cutting the anterior surface of the heart, back to the posterior surface, and so on, back and forth. If I change it to the lateral position, and then I move the ball, I'm changing my imaging plane from side to side. Here I'm focusing on the mitral valve, here more on the tricuspid valve. So back to the 3D rotate. So this is about live 3D. We have something else called 3D zone. 
3 d zoom like any zoom if you use the 2d zoom you will click, click zoom and then you optimize your box in 2d then click zoom again it will enlarge this the same here for 3d but because 3d is not a single plane it is a volume once you click 3d zoom it will be subdivided into two screens one reference screen the one that you started with on the left hand and the other hand it is the other plane the elevation plane as a 2d zoom you have to optimize your box again from side to side this is the left handed screen by moving the ball side to side or if you click again it will change from box position to box size then side to side size and up and down size if i need to focus on the mitral valve for example i will just move the position till i get the mitral valve here my advice to you is if you need if you are interested in the mitral valve don't take too much tissues other than the mitral valve just focus on the mitral valve to preserve the frame rate on the other hand as you can see the right handed box the box is not over the mitral valve so what you can do is just click this one it will uh, optimize your box from side to side till you get the structure of interest and the left handed screen you can change the box size as we said but as you can see if i'm changing the size here the size of the box on the right hand is not changing that can be changed from here the elevation width and then 3d zoom this is the image the still life volume for the mitral valve with the same orientation as the 2d image so in the 2D image, the mitral valve was facing down. Here the 3D zoom, is, the mitral valve is facing down, and here's the lift atrium instead. I'm going to consider while you are changing the depth up and down. If you can see, this is the focus. This is uh, focus means the focal depth between the face of the probe here till the end of uh, this focus signal. That means this is your focal depth only. If you change it, the depth up and down, this focus might come to the apex of the triangle and uh, the rest of the heart will not be included in your focal lift and this will affect the quality of the image so by this focus you have to come down to include all the heart in your focal lift this is important to preserve the quality of the image so 3d zoom if i'm interested in the mitral valve i will go to the mitral valve from optimizing the size and uh, and the position and then I will change the right screen I can change from here I included here on the right hand the left atrial appendage and the mitral valve as well then 3d zoom now this is the mitral valve in 3d zoom mode means this is life life mode and the mitral valve is still facing down exactly the same uh, orientation of the 2d image then by rotating now I'm in 3D rotate, so I'm allowed to rotate up and down, and then I will change to rotate Z to rotate it. I need to make the anterior mitral leaflet anterior. That by putting the aortic valve at 12 o'clock position. The aortic valve is here. I can see it by just rotating the image like that. This is the aortic valve. This is the aortic valve, should be at 12 o'clock position to be uh, anatomically oriented. This is the surgical view of the mitral valve. Optimizing the gain, this brown color, as you can see, is the blood intensity. So turning down the gain will eliminate this brown color from your image. Don't turn it down too much, otherwise the thin tissues of the mitral valve will be lost. The control of the width of the left hand screen is from the, the buttons on the screen and from the board. Spoke size from here. But the size of the right handed screen is, is controlled by here only. Elevation one. And 3D zoom. This is the volume as we said. Then make it facing you by rotating down. Decrease the gain to eliminate the blood intensities. If I decrease the gain too much as you can see the mitral valve tissues because it is thin went away from the image. So I, I have to compromise, increase 
the gain a little bit to regain the mitral tissues without too much blood intensity. And then rotate Z to orient the image in the surgical view. This is the mitral valve. I can magnify from here. This is the anterior mitral leaflet, posterior mitral leaflet. This is the left atrial appendage. By some tilting, you can see the left atrial appendage more clear. This is the left atrial appendage ostium. Again, this is the mitral valve. As you can see, there is some bulge of the middle segment of the anterior mitral leaflet. This is A2. The last thing of the modes is the full volume. Again, see the focus here went up, so I will bring the focus down. If I'm interested to take full volume, for example, for the mitral valve, just click full volume. Again, the machine will be divided into the volume, the 3D volume, and the lateral plane, and the elevation plane. By default, the machine is going for four beats. This is full volume. Once you say full volume, the machine will divide the requested volume into the number of beats uh, you ask it for. If I ask it for four beats, the machine will subdivide the whole volume into four beats. And it will appear here, 3D beats four. If I need to decrease that, make it two, see what's happening down? The sector was divided into two. If I increase that to four, it will be divided into four sectors. One, two, three, four. What the machine will do on each beat, it will take a smaller sector only. The machine will focus all of its power and all of its energy to get one small sector in each beat. Then the second beat will be for the second sector, the third for the third, fourth for the fourth. Then the machine will stitch them together to you. That's why you can see some demarcation lines between uh, the sectors. These are called stitch artifacts. And this is the drawback of the full volume. Full volume has an advantage of having high frame rate. Here is 34 hertz means 34 volumes per second, which is very good if you are speaking about 3D. For sure, 2D and M mode has too much higher frame rates. But for 3D to have 34 volumes per second, this is very good. But the draw drawback of that is a stitch artifact. If I acquire this volume, acquire, and then I will bring it. The machine will display this volume shattered in half. Means it will give me this volume, but cut from the middle. If I click reset probing, the full volume will appear. If I click auto probe, it will be shattered in half to show me what was my image uh, inside. Yeah, you have to get a, a good by cable view. You have to get a, a very good by cable view first. And as much as we can to make the septum flat, then 3D zoom optimize the zoom box and acquire the 3D, rotate Z, and rotate anti-clockwise, tilt left, R A T L E, rotate, decrease the gain, you get a very clear view of the system, severe vena cable opening, 
here. Inferior vena cava opening, station valve, coronary sinus. This is very beneficial if you are going to cannulate the coronary sinus or transeptal puncture or ASD crossing by some rotation. For the tricuspid valve, the same. I either can use the life 3D by some rotation. This is the tricuspid. Decrease again. Because tricuspid is thinner than the mitral, it will appear fainter than the mitral valve. All by 3D zone, going to the tricuspid valve alone. In the left hand and the right handed image, I don't need all that uh, sector width, so I'll uh, decrease it, decrease the depth a little bit. I just focus on the tricuspid valve, like that, then three is off. Decrease again, again, this is the tricuspid valve. If it is rheumatic and thick, it will appear uh, too much clear. And I can see also from the right ventricular perspective from that side. The wide atrial view by 3D zone include both atria. If I need to monitor transeptal puncture also, or to see the behavior of the catheter in the atrium, this is a very good view for that by atrial view. Again, I have to uh, rotate the image to make it an open oriented. Decrease again. This is by atrial view. Very panoramic, uh, good view for both atria at the same time from above. Now I am standing above both atria. This is the interatrial septum. This is the tricuspid valve. I can see even the three cusps of the tricuspid valve. Here is the septal. Here is the anterior or lateral, depends on the literature. And here is the posterior one. This is the mitral, anterior mitral leaflet, posterior mitral leaflet. And this is the way to the left atrial appendage. By decreasing the gain more and more, the appendage will be more clear. This is the whole of the left atrial appendage. Anterior mitral leaflet, posterior, interatrial septum, and tricuspid valve, right atrial cavities here. So the catheter coming from the right side, you will see it from here, puncturing the septum in the roof of the left atrium. This is a very good view, this is live. So you can monitor uh, live events in the cath lab. Balloon mitral, watchman, uh, mitral clip. That, uh, that one will be very good. Just a quick uh, point about the frame rate and sector size. As you can see here, the frame rate here is 18. Because of this side, uh, size of the sector is giving me 18 hertz, means 18 volumes per second. If I increase the width, for example like that, look to what happened to the frame rate. Frame rate here is 11 only, because I increased the requested sector from the machine. If I decrease the sector width, the frame rate is increasing, as you can see. The narrower the sector is, the higher the frame rate. Because the small sector requires smaller or little time from the machine in order to get it. So and the machine will be able to produce more frames, more volumes per second. But if you enlarge the sector, the machine will take more time. More time means less frame rate. And this is very important. If you need to image a structure, you have to be focused to this structure only, in order to preserve the frame rate. This is the tricuspid valve. As, as you notice, maybe you notice that it is now more clear than before because now we decrease the sector size. The aortic valve, again, because it is thinner than the mitral valve, it can appear, but it will not be uh, as clear as the mitral valve. You have two views to get it. It is the short axis base view, which is almost from 40 to 60, and the long axis view. You can get both at the same time by the X-plane. This is the short axis and long axis at the same time. By live 3D, also you can get a view of the aortic valve. As you can see, the sector is not getting the aortic valve fully, so I have to change the, the lateral position. Here is the lateral position, then I will move lateral a little bit to get it into my view. I don't need all the depth in order to preserve the frame rate. Then decrease again a little bit, only a little. Otherwise, you will create a drop out artifacts inside uh, the basis of the leaflets. And then I can magnify. These are the three leaflets of the aortic valve. Interatrial septum is the landmark of the non coronary cusp. 
the left coronary cusp is always to the left, either from transthoracic or transesophageal, and the one which is anterior is the right coronary uh, cusp. Because this is TEE, so the anterior is away from the probe. The probe is here. So what is near to the probe is the posterior. What is away from the probe is anterior. The reverse is in transthoracic. If it is bicuspid, I can see that very clearly also. Because now I can, I'm looking to the aortic valve from a distance. So if there is rafe or any abnormality in number of cusps or uh, whatsoever, I will be able to see it very clearly by 3D. As you can see, these holes in the basis of the aortic valve are only artifacts, drop out artifacts because of the gain. The basis of the aortic valve leaflets can reach down to less than half millimeter. And this is very hard for 3D to image. But mitral valve is at least two millimeters thickness. That's why you can see it very clearly. The other view is the long axis. Long axis view the aortic valve. Also I can either by uh, live 3D, I can change the lateral position just to include more of the aortic root. This is very helpful during tabby because we can see the balloon, we can see the catheter in mo a more panoramic view, not only one line. So the catheter can move inside or the big tail or the balloon and you will still have it uh, into your view. You can rotate that, whatever I want. If I need to focus more on the aortic valve, I can, by the lateral position, just come near to the aortic valve. And by the lateral width also, I can decrease it more and more. And then, so these are the controls. You have position and you have width. Lateral position, lateral width, elevation position, elevation width. And then 3D rotate. Now I have half only of the aortic valve. So what I need to enlarge now is the elevation width. So I'll change from lateral width to elevation width. And I increase it like that. If I don't need all, uh, all of the depths, so I can change the elevation position. I'll bring it like that. This is the idea of how to control the image. Now I'm looking to the aortic valve from the ascending aorta. Now I'm inside the ascending aorta and looking down to the aortic valve. Rotation will give me the aortic valve from the LVOT. Now I'm inside the LVOT. So I can see the image from any aspect, as you can see. And also I can look at the image later on after I uh, finish the study to look uh, for any abnormality by offline analysis. From that view also I can use the x plane, although it is not 3D as we said, but again it is one of the capabilities of the 3D TA probe. By x plane, I can move here and screen the whole uh, anterior mitral leaflet. For example, this is A2. What appears in this view, the longer axis view, is strictly A2 and B2 only. So I can, by uh, putting the X-plane, and screen this A2 from base near the aortic valve on the right-handed uh, screen. This is the base of A2, mid of A2, and then the tip of A2. And this is the posterior leaflet, B2 also. From that view, again, I can apply the 3D zoom. The beauty of 3D is that you can apply it from any view that can show you the structure of interest, can go ahead and uh, acquire it by any mode of acquisition, either 3D zoom or 3D rotate. Like what I'm doing here, this is a 3D zoom. Then decrease the gain to see what's inside. Please uh, magnify a little bit and rotate to make it anatomically oriented. Again, here is the aortic valve at 12 o'clock position, and this is the mitral valve. Anterior mitral leaflet, posterior mitral leaflet, this is the septum, and this is the tricuspid valve, right atrial cavity. This is the lower part of the anterior septum. Postero, medial commissure, because this is the septum, this is medial. And anterolateral commissure, if I increase the depth or the width more, I will get uh, the left atrial appendage. This is the left atrial appendage. From that view, I can notice that there is some malcoaptation gap in this valve. So there is A2 prolapse, and there is some malcoaptation here. There is a gap, and this is the cause of uh, MR.
coefficient. This is the gap. There is null coefficient here in front of A2 sigma. If I need to screen the left atrial appendage, again the best view that will show it in 2D depends from 40 to 60. This is the left atrial appendage. You don't have to open it fully. Again, if you need to screen it by X-plane, to screen it from by, it will give you the appendage in two uh, different axes. It is very clear, no from by here. Also by 3D zoom, can optimize my view to get the appendage within the box. Increase the elevation width. the image to face you and this is a very uh, good view for the appendage this is the osteum of the appendage itself from which I can do probing and offline analysis by multiband reformation to get the exact osteal uh, dimension and this is the comedian ridge by some rotation above the comedian ridge will be the left upper pulmonary vein osteum the descending aorta, the, the usual uh, at zero degree uh, level of imaging of the descending uh, aorta. This patient has normal uh, crystal clean uh, aortic uh, wall, no thrombi. She's young, uh, no uh, atheromatous uh, plaques. But this is very important in patient going for TAVI as well, or patients with dissection. Uh, this is a very good view to screen it. This can be done by 3D uh, zoom. Also to get my advice, if, if you need to get any structure by full volume, put it uh, on, on its long axis. Means if the four sectors uh, were taken uh, on the short axis of the valve like that, so the short axis that you are interested in to see is divided into four. So this is a, not a good way to take the aortic valve. In order to take it, again, put the long axis of the valve, not the, not the visit, long axis of the valve on the reference image like that and then full volume that means it will the short axis of the valve will be taken into one volume here and the segmentation will be in its long axis so you will have an intact valve in view optimizing the full volume uh, uh, boxes if I need to, uh, the mitral valve for example here first of all I have to optimize the depth I don't need all the depth uh, a tip in order to optimize the image first before acquiring the full volume, go uh, by the four beats into one beat only. But this is faster in optimization of the image. And as you can see, the elevation plane is not taking the whole mitral valve. So I have to position the elevation position. I, I'm taking it like that to include the mitral valve. The lateral position, I need to include the whole mitral valve. And I can also play with the width, elevation width and the lateral width. Now I'm sure that my, the mitral valve is included. Now I can increase the number of beats. Now we took full volume for the mitral valve. You can again use that with color. I will again back to one beat. Then enlarge the sector. The position is the lateral position go to the mitral valve okay and then the elevation position include the mitral valve okay then I will enlarge the, the width then increase the beats to make sure that I included all the mitral valve in the image before I acquire the full volume with color. I can suppress the color to have the 2D image alone. And I can put the color back. I can make the color only one direction to show me the reverse only. Both, both directions. Color suppress. BW suppress. I need to have the color only. 
Excellent. This is the representative only.